Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, look. Come here, come here right away and look. Whatever it is you want me to look at, can it wait until I put on my bathrobe? Put on your slippers, too. Come over to the window and look. Come I on. know, it's still snowing. I can see it from here. Darling, snowing is just the half of it. Oh, all right. Here I come. No. Look. I don't see a thing. That's just it. It's snowing so hard you can't see anything but snow. Mm-hmm. This is a real fall. Fall? What do you mean, fall? This is the middle of January, and it's pouring snow like salt. Isn't it beautiful? It must have snowed all night. David, it looks just like a pillow had been torn apart. Why, this makes every other snow we've ever had look plain measly. It certainly does. It must have snowed at least oh, 24 inches since yesterday. 24 inches? Mm-hmm. Two feet at least. My own little mathematician. I can't even see over to Jared Tucker's house. Can I know. You? It's falling so thick I could get lost looking for myself. All right, come on quick. Now get dressed. What's the big hurry? I want to get on my train and get to the office. On a day like today? Why not today? But it's pouring snow out. Well, it'll be pouring snow out in New York, oh, too. Oh, we are New York. Oh, well, I suppose you're right. Work comes first. It certainly does. Oh, darling, I love your being an architect, but... Sometimes I just wish you were rich instead. You do, huh? Then when it was warm, we could play. When it was cold, we could play. When it was snow, we could build a snowman. David, why are you standing at the window like that? You better get dressed. You'll freeze. Mm Mm-hmm. 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 Hmm? What? That snow is pretty deep. Twenty-four inches and every bit of it all. (sighs) Look at the drifts over there by the stone fence. They cover up the wall completely. Good. I always hated walls between places. I think that's what's so wonderful about the snow. It's the great equalizer. Like Lincoln. No walls, no fences, no roads even. Say, can can you see the road? Hey, look up towards the barn. Where? I don't see it. Up there, to the right. Oh, 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 I see, yeah. Is that the road? Is that where the barn's supposed to be? It certainly is. David, it blew away in the night. It disappeared. All I can see is a, a drift, sort of. And behind that drift, sort of, lies our barn. Well, what do you know? Well, David, we can't get into the barn today. No, well, we'll have to find a way. We'll have to dig a path or something. Well, yeah, that sounds exciting. Hey, where are you going? Downstairs to give things the once over. What things? What once over? Wait for me, wait for me. I just want to see what's happened in front of the garage and in the driveway. Do you mean there is a possibility that we're snowed in? Ooh, not only a possibility, but a fact. Oh, how wonderful. Now, stop talking nonsense. It's no fun to be snowed in, How believe you know? me. Have you ever been snowed in? No, no, but I've read it in books. Oh, well, it's more than I have. Still, I don't think I'd mind being snowed in. I think I'd like it. It all depends upon which way the wind was blowing. Well, everything always depends on which way the wind is blowing, darling. Now, where are you going? Just to look out the living room window, do you mind? Ooh, it's cold. No, I don't mind. Say, we'll have to turn the heat up higher, darling. The house feels like an igloo. Well, igloos are warm. Oh, nonsense. They can't be. Oh, mercy, just as I suspected. We are snowed in. The drift of snow in front of the garage, five feet high. (coughs) And our driveway is banked up at least four feet, and it'll take hours to to dig that up and to get the car out. How wonderful. Wonderful, my eye. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, and heck, I'm going to get out of here today. There's more than I can see. That's just it. You're not. That's why it's wonderful. Now, listen, I can't stay here stuck in a snow pile for no reason. Listen, the snow pile is not no reason. The snow pile is a very good reason to be stuck in. If I'd have known about this last night... What would you have done? Come on, tell well, me I'd what have, you've done. I'd have, I'd, have, I'd have done something. Mm, I see, something. Yeah. Well, like what? Gone outside and blown at the heavens and sent the snow someplace else? Well, you're a else, big help. I wonder how long it would take me to shovel my way out of here. There are times, David, when you just have to face facts and accept them. You give in awfully quickly, don't you? Women know when to give in, and women know when to fight. Yeah, big talk. Snow is a fact to be faced. I give in. Hey, where are you going? Calling the town hall. What for? They didn't make the snow. Ever hear of a snow plow? Oh. I'm going to find out about when the snow plow will be coming this way. David, you're so businesslike. 
What do you want to do that for? Well, when the snow plow comes down the road, I'll catch it so it can clear out the drive and we'll be all set. David, it'll be days before the snow plow gets way out yeah, here. That's what you think. That's what I'm hoping you mean. If necessary, I'll call George Reynolds himself and get some you action. You would, you would, you would use pull? I certainly David, would. not not you ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Well, you should be. And just because we live in the country and it snows a little, there's no reason why I have to stay away from my office. All right, call George I'm Reynolds. I'm going to. See if it'll do you any good. Well, it will. You know his number? If I don't, the operator will. Oh. After all, he's the first select man of Eastbrook. What's the matter with this darn instrument? David, stop shaking the receiver like that. It is not a raffle. Oh. I don't get the dial tone. Well, maybe there isn't one today. There's always a dial tone. Well, maybe today's different because of the snow. Oh, I know. Telephone lines don't, of course. Now, stop suggesting things like that. David, telephone lines always come down the first thing when there's a storm. It's a rule of nature. Oh. Darling, don't you think that's what it is? Yes, I think that's what it is. Well, you don't have to sound so nasty about it. I didn't pull them down. Everything but. What's that mean? That means that you are delighted that they're down. Oh, no. But you think there's a wonderful joke on me that really? they're down, yes. That you're hilarious and in stitches because we're snowed in. I am, I confess. At rock bottom, you am too. Confess. Yeah. Who says I am? Perfectly obvious. You wouldn't protest so much. No. Do you know that psychologically speaking, all this protesting is just a cover up for your true emotions? No, well, the yes, snow actually, has covered up everything. Actually, but... you're delighted to stay home with me. It's just I the am, kind of day yeah. when a man like you likes to stay home with me. Mm-hmm. But. Because you're a man who can't go to the office, it behooves you to protest. It's perfectly simple when you analyze it yeah, psychologically. Yeah. You think you're very smart, don't you? Yes, I think I'm very smart. Well, I bet you the trains aren't even running. David, maybe we'll be stranded for days, like hermits together. I wonder how Mama is. Well, don't worry about Mama. Mama's in New York. Lucky Mama. Say, I won't be able to phone her all day. Yeah, sure you will. The telephone lines will be fixed fairly soon. But if she tries to call me, she'll worry. The operator will tell her that the lines are down. I know, but then she'll worry even more. Now, darling, there's no point to you worrying about Mama worrying about us. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Why? She would have to go just before a day like today. It would have been so perfect if she'd been here, too. Oh, David, why don't you kick me? How can you stand such a Mama baby? Well, turn around. I'll kick you. I love you so, and I act like such a nincompoop. Oh, shut up. (gasps) I love it when you tell me to shut up that way. Say it again. David, you know what this is like? It's like we're on an island with a sea all around us. No matter what happens to the rest of the world, for just this little while, we're safe. Well, you can't live on an island. No, but it's nice for today. Just you and me. David, admit it. You cannot dig your way out. Can you? Well, if I could, I would. But, but you can't. Looks... Nobody could, not even you. David, I'm hearing things. Mm, so am I. I'm hearing bells. What are you hearing? Doorbells. No sensible man would be out on a day like uh-huh, this. Ha-ha, but you would be if I weren't holding you back by brute force. I can't imagine who it could be except... Well, whoever it is got the most terrific constitution. Well, as I life. live and Talk breathe. Here. Come in, hurry up before you get blown away. Come on, Ain't come on, come on. going to blow me away. Mr. <gasps> Tucker, Something what are you doing on a day like this? I can't see the Norton. Here, let me Why, she look it. like I come out to do Well, 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 is everything all right? How's Delilah? Is she all right? Everything's tipped up, ma'am. Uh, why all the questions? What about your animals? What about them? Well, what is it you came over about? I didn't come over about nothing. I was just out taking a walk and figured I'd drop in and say hello. Just, just, just taking a walk? Do I look like I've been swimming? <laughs> David, I don't believe my ears to you. <laughs> or my eyes. What's the matter, ma'am? But how did you get here on a day like today? I ambled on me two legs. Mr. Tucker, you are quite a fellow. I had to walk, son. Was no car big and strong enough that could make the roads. Yep, when you get down to rock bottom, a man's only got his legs to depend on. Yeah, I guess yeah, you're a good right. snowstorm makes you realize you can't put your faith in modern contraptions. Is your phone broken down? That dang instrument, it's as wishy-washy as a woman. Too much rain, blink. Too much snow, blink. Too much this, that, and... Why, that gadget poops right out. (laughs) Yes, it's brass tacks that makes a man reckon with himself. Well, I still can't get over your walking way over here. Look at you. You look like a snowman. I sure hope I ain't messing up your house here. You're not. Snow melts. Give me this weather any day, I say. The kind of weather that separates the chaff from the wheat. I ain't got no fears of this kind of weather. Nope, I can bite my false teeth into it. (laughs) Get a good bite of it, tussle with it, wrestle with it. 
It's me against whatever it is the sky has got to dish out. It's me, Jared Tucker, what wins every time. Well, I certainly elect you champion this time. What do you say about it, Sean? No, I, I haven't thought of it quite in your way. Well, think of it. Sunny weather, you depend on a car, a telephone, an electrical train. Then the world closes in on you. You can't drive your car because you can't get out of your garage. The telephone's busted. Train ain't running. What do you got left? Just yourself. And that's where I come in. Jared Tucker versus the weather. Keeps you alive, son. It's the tussle that keeps you alive. I guess that's the outlook that you get when you've lived with the weather so long. Lived with the weather so long, why, the weather and me have come to know just what we can expect of each other. And I ain't afeard, though the, the weather might be. <laughs> well, I uh, guess I'll be seeing you folks. Hey, Mr. Tucker, where are you going? Back to Delilah before she starts worrying. Now, now, listen, your sister won't worry. She knows you better than to worry now, listen, about you. women always worry. Builds them up to worry. And it belittles the man. So women always worry. Well... Uh, Got to get back before she starts worrying. Uh, thank you for the visit. But you... Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Uh, think nothing of it, son. Now, I'll be seeing you. Mr. Right. Tucker. You, uh, you ain't got nothing better to do this afternoon. Drop on in, hey? Oh, yes, we'll do that. Hey, watch where you're going. Uh, don't fall in the drift. Oh, don't worry about me, son. <laughs> I got a better nose for snow than a beagle, than a beagle for a rabbit. <laughs> I better shut that door for you, freeze. Mm. Upon my well, soul and body. I guess he's old man weather himself. David, where are you going? Get dressed. Dressed? What for? I can't start shoveling our way out in pajamas and slippers, Captain. Darling, it's hopeless. You agreed it's hopeless. Are you hinting that I'm not the man that Tucker is? David, come back here. You're not as young as Tucker is. In your eyes, your youngsters are no doubt different from all others. But in some ways, all teenagers are alike. They all seem to dote on Coca-Cola. It means sociability and good times to them. If you keep plenty of Coke on ice, you'll earn the thanks of your own children and their friends as well. Well, Joe, what do you think of that old man, Jared Tucker? Certainly not as old as his age, David. He certainly is. <laughs> Tell me, you going to get into town? Well, I'm going to make a good stab at it. You can bet your life on that. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't even make a stab at it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to let Jerry Tucker show me up. I'll tell you that much. Well, stop worrying about it. You see, the trains aren't running, David, so no use bucking the drifts. Is, uh, is that the real dope, Joe? That it is, David. Oh, oh. Well, well, in that case, I'll uh, just have to sit back and enjoy the snow, I guess. Say... I wonder how soon it'll be good for skiing, Joe. Oh, Monday, I think. Monday? As early as that? Is that the real dope, too? Well, you'll find out on Monday, David. Well, tell the truth, I don't mind if I do. I'll see you then, Joe. Knee deep in a drift, no doubt. So long, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.